Hey everybody, um, welcome back. And today um, I got an email from Renogy with an outline on a potential fix regarding the beeping noise you hear in the background um, with my Renogy Smart Shunt. And that beeping noise stems from um, the state of charge alarm that you can set within the DC Home app or the um, Renogy Core 1. The problem is when I reset the parameters so that the state of charge alarm will go off at 30% as opposed to the default of 50%, um, even though it says it saves it, it doesn't save it. And after a few minutes, um, it'll just go right back to the 50% um, uh, parameter. And uh, it actually never, the alarm never stops, I'll put it that way. So, anywho, um, we're going to go through a set of uh, instructions they sent me here. And excuse the shadowing there, we're working after dark here. Um, the other thing I noticed, Renogy, is like, you know, I, I, I am a subscriber, and I have the Renogy One portal, but the smart shunt does not show up on this, and I was kind of hoping we could take care of that. Um, someday with one of your updates, it's not real critical for me. Um, so there's my smart shunt back there. It's behind my batteries. And you can see I've got for the thermostat from the smart shunt. I just have it taped to my negative uh, output there, negative cable lug of the battery pack. And over here is the power wire. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the power wire according to their instructions. And then after that, we'll remove the smart shunt from the Renogy One core setting. So we'll try to get that good and focused for you, but let's go through those first two steps, all right? Okay, before we get started with the disconnecting of the smart shunt, we'll just kind of give you an idea of what's happening here. So if we go over here and we click on the, the uh, menu button and then we go to smart shunt, you can see that it has a uh, the low state of charge alarm is triggered. We go up to the settings on that then we come down to um, alarm. And basically the state of charge alarm is on, which I've turned it off. It just resets back. And it goes back to 50%. I've set that down to 30% like multiple times and turned off the alarm. It just continues to go back to um, this factory default. Um, as far as the battery goes, I've got 400 amp hours total. I've got two 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries in parallel. And we've synced it and everything. Um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to start disconnecting the power supply over here for the smart shunt and kind of go through the sequence of what they'd like me to do, which includes uninstalling from the Renogy Core 1 itself and then restarting everything and reinstalling. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so turning off the power for the smart shunt is pretty simple. You just take the red power lead here and... Um, for me, I just go right to my um, hub there. Go ahead and unscrew it. This should cut the power off to that bad boy. The beeping should stop. Everything should seize. All right. Let's we'll go ahead and take that off. And let's go ahead and pull that off of there. Okay. Now, as you can see, Lights are off on the shunt, and the beeping has stopped. So, okay, in order to uninstall the smart shunt, we wanna go back to the home menu. We'll go back into here, um, the menu page. We're gonna click on smart shunt. Now, oh, already gone through that. So you gotta click kind of towards the top of that. Um, now it's saying there's 85% in the battery, but the trigger is, you know, it's going on. Anyways, we come up here to the menu settings, well, and then from there, we're going to go down to uh, General and delete the smart shunt. 
delete it. Let's go back to the home menu, put a check on that. And that, okay, it is deleted. Now, on to the next step. Okay, now, the next step is, is just reconnecting power to the smart shunt. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our lead wire here. Pop it on there. Just heard one little beep. Hopefully that's just a, I'm alive beep. <laughs> Go ahead and screw that on there really quick. There's that. Okay, so that's reconnected to the bus bar there. Just snug. We don't want to tighten her down too much. I like to kind of just do things back the way I did. Okay, now we're going to go to the next step. And that is re-add the Smart Shump 300 to the Renogy Core 1. Well, let's see what we got here. Okay, so again, we're back in the home menu on the Renogy Core 1. I'm going to click on the devices here. We're going to add a device, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just let it scan. This is the monitor for the regular shunt here, um, which was a good shunt, actually. I just like being able to monitor while I'm not at home. Um, she's scanning. It may take a minute. We'll see here. Okay, so last couple of minutes it was searching for a new device. Um, it wasn't, it didn't come up. So I deleted the Smart Shun off the DC Home app also. And I'm preparing to do like a hit the reset button on the Smart Shunt um, itself. And then we're going to go ahead and try this again. All right, let's get at it. Okay, so we're going to try to just reset it. We're going to hold the reset button down for five seconds there. One, two, three, four, five. There it goes. Okay. Now, Bluetooth should be kicking back on here. I hope. <laughs> okay, so like I said before, I deleted everything from the app also, the DC Home app. Um, we're still not throwing out a signal down there. So what I'm going to attempt to do here is kind of reset everything and add a device here via the DC Home app. Um, so we're going to go ahead and there it is right there. We'll go ahead and confirm the smart shunt. Okay. And that did the trick for that. Now we've got power on on the smart shunt and the green light indicates it does have a blue tooth signal um, can connectivity if you want to say that so we're back in the game on that now this is on the on your uh, um, direct connect this is all bluetooth now i'm not using the dc home app so what i'm hoping is over here with the dc home app um having a hard time focusing on that isn't it we're going to go ahead and add a device so I just had a thought here while I'm back in the core one mode. Let's go ahead and add a device, see what happens that way. Some of this stuff is not spelled out really nicely um, in the manual. And I think the manual can be gone through. So let's add a device there. So it's going to start searching here. Now, this is what happened to me when I first set this up. It, Kind of threw up that link there, which means it's linked to, I believe, the core one. Um, let's add a device there. Let's just see. Get them both going. Let's add devices all the way around here. So let's just scan it away. You can hear this beeping back there again. There it goes. That means it realizes it's at 50%, but I can't get in there to change the state of charge now. Or the alarm. Well, I probably can. We'll come back to that in a moment. 
Okay, so interestingly enough, um, when this was uh, looking for devices, I turned off the uh, Renogy Home app over here, and all of a sudden the Smart Shump popped up. I don't know if it was just like timing or if that's actually what did it, but we're going to go ahead and add the Smart Shump. So we'll kind of come on up here. Got it. Okay, so the smart shunt is in right now. Okay, we're, we're having a little success here, folks. Let's come back over to the DC Home app. And let's get that up and running here. Everything's kind of powering up here. Let's switch it back to Renogy Core 1, see if it, okay. We're in luck, there's the smart shunt right there. So, what we're gonna do next, we're gonna come back over to here. We're gonna try to reset the parameters. You probably hear the beeping in the background, that means the state of charge alarm is going off. Um, we are at 49.9% discharge right now. So, let's go to here. Um, low state of charge alarm is triggered. Let's go to settings, let's go to alarm, let's go to state of charge, let's click in here, Oop. oh, trigger value, let's lower the trigger value down to 30%, okay, I'm not even going to mess with the hysteris button uh, value right now, hysteresis, let's save it. That may have did it, folks. I don't hear an alarm. <gasps> now, that would be something. There's no alarm, folks. So that's what it takes to solve this problem. You have to have a little bit of persistence, I suppose. Everything's working down there. Everything's up and running here. Whoops, get the off of that. Okay, let's do a little summary of this. Okay, so... There you have it, guys. Um, it's a bit of a process. I, I think, you know, if you're looking for a fast connect from some of these products, um, and I, I can't say that any other brand's any better than this one. I have experience with Renogy is what I have experience with. Um, you have to be a little per bit persistent, have some patience with it, and potentially try a couple different things. Um, you can see what I did there. At one point, you know, I turned the app off on my main phone, um, and then all of a sudden, it popped up over on the core one, right? The smart shunt did. Um, boom, it magically appeared. That was great. And then I went back to the uh, phone and I clicked on to the DC home app and then the smart shunt came up. Happy times right there. So in, in a nutshell, at that point, I went back to the uh, Renogy core one, went into the settings in the smart shunt and reset my parameters for the state of charge. And the alarm is now gone. I imagine if I let these batteries sink down to 30%, that alarm's gonna go off again, or 35% because of the hysteresis, I guess is how you pronounce it. Um, I got that at a 5% buffer there. And uh, so it should, I think it just defaults like five. Um, so 35% is when the battery will start sending an alarm or the smart shunt will start sending an alarm. Um, but that'll be a while before I find out because we're going to throw a full charge on these batteries tonight. We've had a lot of cloudy days here in Oregon. Um, my setup works really well. It's taken, a, um, you know, bringing in about 10% of my overall charge. So, you know, 40 amp hours or whatever that is. Uh, but it's just not enough to keep it going um, when you're burning more than that. So I've been depleting the batteries for about a week now. Um, at any rate, I'm sorry about the longer video. And the cutting in and out um, as far as trying to troubleshoot this. It's difficult for me to troubleshoot with the camera rolling all the time. Um, but I think I got it figured out. And I hope this helps you guys. If there's any underlying questions or something I didn't uh, cover in this video, shoot me a message, um, add a comment. Um, I think a comment would be the best and everybody can see what your question is. And I'll address that as best I can. All right. Thanks, guys, and uh, thanks for watching and checking in. Take care.
Okay, um, I'd like to mention that it did take me a bit of time to connect the smart shunt both to the DC home app on my phone and also the Renogy Core 1. Um, I tried a few different options and then it just kind of happened on its own, which was very similar to what happened the first time I hooked up the smart shunt to my system. Um, seems like just having a little patience and a little persistence, it does pay off and then it's really stable after that. Um, in saying that, I was reading through some blogs um, in the community page on the DC Home app and there's an advocator who goes by the call name Solar Energy System. And what they were saying is that you initially want to activate pairing on the DC Home app or the Core 1, maybe both, and then you press reset on the smart shunt. And he said it hooks up seamlessly at that point. Um, I haven't tried that that I know of. I may have done it on accident, trying different options and it worked. Um, but right now I don't want to go back and try to redo it. The system's up and running. I may try it this weekend when I have a couple days off if I don't get too busy um, with other projects. But might be something to take a look at is that little sequence to get everything to sync up properly. All right.